Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, pretty interesting stuff. First up, fund manager Bill Miller louds Bitcoin and says, this is the best one I've heard, Bitcoin could be rat poison and the rat could be cash. And this is coming from an institutional investment firm which has billions of assets under management. Also, with all this heavy activity of the cryptocurrency market, our old friends at Coinbase are down, but that's not what's surprising. What's surprising is we have new players in the market who are also down. So we'll take a look at that, but first let's take a look at what's going on the market. So uh, welcome back to the classic style. I would like to switch up things. Uh, sometimes we'll just do screencasts, sometimes we'll do things in the office, but uh, I want to get back to the news and see what's really driving the market. And uh, I can just tell you right now, uh, it was a great day. So it is January 7th, about 4.30 p.m. El Paso, Texas time. And we hit 40,000 for Bitcoin, and within 10 minutes, it rocketed down to 38,000. And that some people might say that's a crash. Some people might say that's a dip or a pullback. I don't care what you call it. It's a lot of money lost in 10 minutes. I mean, imagine $2,000. I haven't lost that much money since Vegas. So uh, it's just an amazing. And then, of course, it goes back up to 39,000. Every whole number that we have for Bitcoin will equal traders are somebody who wants to take profit so once we keep once we see 40 and these are big numbers i mean 41 i don't expect too much 45 man nah, maybe but when we hit 50 expect a big pullback because people are going to take profits that's just how it is i personally am not i'm done selling for a while and that's just how it is uh, ethereum's up tethers nobody cares unless you're an auditor xrp watch out 27 percent for the day 55 percent for the week and it's up to 32 cents so um, maybe the SEC uh, lawsuit has been shaken out and people just don't care. Maybe they're just buying like crazy. I don't know what's going on. I just know that in the middle of January, we're going to see a lot of exchanges and places either delist or stop trading. So that will be an interesting time. And also, not to dash anybody's feelings, but uh, there's about 200 million XRP uh, was just sent to Coinbase. This was uh, January 7th. This was just a couple hours ago. So we'll see if that, and usually what that means is people are, they're not sending it to Coinbase because they like Coinbase. First of all, I don't know how they send it to Coinbase because it's down. Maybe they got it in beforehand, but if that's the case, usually it means a lot of selling going on, but uh, we will see. I mean, maybe not. Maybe people just send it over there for no reason. And then uh, what else we got? Litecoin. Actually, we got a lot of pullback in the market, actually. Um, and this could be <clears throat> either people taking profits or people taking it out of altcoins and going, you know what? I'm just going to put it in the king crypto, Bitcoin. I know that the gains are less, but it's a much safer option. When you're an investor, you kind of want to balance out, like, you know, how much uh, risk am I putting into this versus the reward? And sometimes it's better just to have, you know, a fast nickel than a slow dime. And uh, that's just kind of how it goes. Also, what do we got? Polka dots down, but still, I mean, look at these 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 uh, numbers. I mean, 30 cents for Cardano. Polka dots almost $10. Bitcoin Cash is hitting around 450. Stellar huge run, 135% for the week, and 31 cents. That's crazy. Binance Coin 40. Ah oh, man, it's just so much good stuff going on. And look at Chainlink for Pete's sakes, 1588. Holy smokes. Wrap, ah, wrap Bitcoin, whatever. Bitcoin SV down at EOS. Everything's down a little bit, but again. These numbers are fantastic. Celsius uh, retains in the top 20. Ah, my theta went down, but it's still holding at $2. So since essentially it's a pretty good day. Let's just filter this out and see if we just would invest in a Bitcoin, how we would have done against all the other alts. Well, if you would have put it into Ethereum, we would have done it down 4%, 6%. XRP, it would have been up 18%, so watch out. <laughs> but pretty much, wow, this is the most red I've ever seen. Everything else you'd be down except for urine. So yeah, 12% for Solana, don't know what that is. Okay, and that's about it. So uh, overall, pretty good day. Let's jump into today's top story because I just, it's, it's, a, it's the best response I've heard in a long time. So this is pretty good. Fund manager Bill Miller louds Bitcoin, says it's uh, <laughs> Bitcoin could be rat poison and the rat could be cash. What's he talking about here? Well, this was uh, in his brief focus on the top crypto. The fund manager starts by noting how Bitcoin has outperformed all major asset classes. And I guess he was sending out probably a newsletter and he's probably talking about to all his different investors like, look, I know you think that Bitcoin may be a joke or if you don't, it doesn't matter. Here's why it's awesome. And he just lays out in the very first sentence, it's outperformed all major asset classes. This is a perfect response. 
This isn't getting into the details of the weeds of, of, of how money is made and, 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 and the, uh, the, the, the criteria for money and what a store of value is. It's just like, look, it's just beating the tar out of everything. That's really all you got to know. Do you want to know more stuff? Okay, we can. But I mean, this is a great, uh, you know, first sentence. No, then reminds his audience of the fact that the digital asset market's capitalization now surpasses that of Jamie Dimon's J.P. Morgan or Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway. And what he says, if you're new to the, the space, uh, years ago, I think it was 2018, there was an interview with Warren Buffett, and he called Bitcoin rat poison squared. He didn't understand it. And some people would would uh, chalk that up to, well, one of the greatest investors has dismissed Bitcoin. So, you know, it just means that it's uh, illegitimate. But you have to understand, uh, Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett, those guys are old school investors. And they just don't get technology. They really don't. I mean, they're fantastic investors, very, I mean, brilliant guys. But I mean, they passed on Google, they passed on other tech companies because they just don't get it. So with, with Bitcoin, why would they understand and why would they actually get it? They wouldn't. So uh, when Miller here is talking about, hey, you know, <laughs> it may be rat poison, but the real rat in the room is cash. Perfect response. And uh, I'm surprised it took two years for someone to actually come up with that. Amazing. So when they talk about market capitalization, uh, right now, Bitcoin has a market capitalization of 716 billion. 716 billion, that's crazy. Uh, we surpassed the 1 trillion uh, market cap. So we're at one point, we're 1 trillion 65 billion, that's crazy. And then the dominance of Bitcoin is 68%. So there's a lot of money into Bitcoin. Right now it's 730 billion, which is the market cap. That's a lot of dough. If we got 730 billion, I just want to, just, I want to start with that because the cap, the market cap of JP Morgan uh, for everything that, that they have there is 400 billion. Do you realize what that means? At 730 billion, if when we get 70 billion, which would probably be like next week, we will have doubled the market cap of JP Morgan. JP Morgan, who Jamie Dimon uh, pretty much said that he would fire any of his traders if he, if he caught them trading Bitcoin, call it a fraud and a scam and a Ponzi scheme. We just doubled that. We just doubled his market cap. So what does that say about where the world is going and what they actually are interested in? Also, Berkshire Hathaway is at 540 billion, and the person or the head of Berkshire Hathaway, call it Rat Poison Squared, and we're beating the pants off them too. So it's an, it's an interesting dynamic about what is going on. And then this is Miller's famous quote. I will always remember that. That is fantastic. I'm going to follow that guy on Twitter if he's got a Twitter account. So Miller did a really great thing here. So first, he pretty much talked about how it is the best performing asset class. Then he just then he did a social proof where he said, hey, look, look at the market cap. It's being JP Morgan. It's also beating Berkshire Hathaway. Two important points. And then he just brings it home with saying, hey, it's not just this. This is what is also going on to support his assertions about Bitcoin. He points to the growing demand for Bitcoin by large companies like Square, Mass Mutual, and MicroStrategy. So if you're a person in a newsletter who's getting an old school type of newsletter and like, wow, Mass Mutual, that's an old school insurance place. And if they're getting into Bitcoin, I should get into Bitcoin. And it's it, it's it's the same thing about using these social proofs, these different type of institutions. And I always knew once these people got into it, then other people would hear be like, oh, okay, well, I don't want to be first, but I definitely don't want to be last. And if they're getting into it, well, I'd trust them because they're smart and I'll do it myself. And then here we are. So he says, according to Miller, these companies have moved cash into Bitcoin rather than have guaranteed losses on cash held on their balance sheet. PayPal and Square Loan are estimated to be buying on behalf of their customers all of the 900 new Bitcoins mined each day. And that is true. They are doing that. Uh, but the one that is breaking that rule is Grayscale. And I think there was like an unwritten rule be be between everybody, between MicroStrategy, between Mass MassMutual, uh, between PayPal. And they were all like going, okay, well, let's not buy too much the daily, daily volume because if we buy more than that, then, you know, we can't really, we might actually raise the price of Bitcoin. Let's just keep as low as we possibly can. And Grayscale said, hold my beer because I'm going to buy 13x more. And they did that like a couple of weeks ago. And then all of a sudden, boom, off to the races we went. So <laughs> they pretty much just said, forget everybody. It's every man for himself. And they bought 13 times more than the, than the daily amount in one day. And everybody's like, okay, it's on now. And uh, that's why I thought, uh, that's why I think we've seen a uh, pretty good or dramatic rise in Bitcoin. Miller then ends his letter by saying this, when more companies decide to diversify some small portion of the cash balances into Bitcoin instead of cash, then the current trickle into Bitcoin will become a torrent. 
great way to say it. So let me know what you think in the comment section. I totally agree with Miller. And let's move on to our next piece. So, hey, uh, the market's uh, really jumping up. And you know what that means? Coinbase is down. So I don't mean to beat a dead horse. And I don't mean to kick a man when he's down. But come on. I mean, come on. Coinbase, they have more lawyers than they have developers. And that's the problem. So they need to get a handle on this. And I'm not saying... I'm just going to back up and just tell you like this. This is my personal thoughts. I have no proof of this, so don't sue me, anybody. But Coinbase, if you're listening, don't sue me. But I think you're incompetent. And I think either you are have mass incompetence in what you are doing or you were doing this on purpose. Because if you watch a, video, a couple of videos ago, we talked about how institutional players are using Coinbase for microtransactions and Coinbase is catering to the institutional crowd. I have no problem with that. I have no problem with them doing that. It's a business. It's a free market. We live in the good old US of A and they can do whatever they want to. However, when you start to shun the original investors, the retail investors, me and you, to give an upper hand to a bunch of institutional players, and maybe there's a little bit of manipulation going on. I'm not saying that's what's happening. I'm just saying maybe, just saying maybe, that I think that's when things get a little too crazy and out of hand. And uh, I can't trust Coinbase. I, I just can't trust them. And this happens again and again and again and again and again. So there's no way that this can keep happening. A multi-billion dollar company who is about to IPO very soon. You're going to tell me that they're going to keep letting this happen. And all the other exchanges are just, you know, no problems. Sure. That's Coinbase. But they've gone down multiple times. This was kind of depressing. Kraken went down too. So I'm going to give Kraken a pass because guess what? Kraken's never gone down that I've heard of. I mean, it's just been, I mean, if they have, it's probably few and far between. Everybody hears about Coinbase. So Kraken went down. Also, Binance went down. So you got three of the big players going down. And then someone else told me that crypto.com had gone down. I took a look at their website and it looks like that, that in January 8th, which they are a little bit ahead of us. They're on Hong Kong time, apparently. Crypto.com is operational, but they had a little bit of a slowdown and some login issues, but it looks like they correct them very fast. So there is a massive amount of things going on. I bring this up for a couple reasons. One, don't use Coinbase. Two is if you look in the description of all my videos, there's a link. It's going to look like this. And it's going to take you to my exchange and wallet fees. And the reason why I'm recommending this, first of all, all these links are affiliate links. So you don't have to use these links. You can go right to Voyager, Celsius, Crack, and SwiftX, Gemini Pro, all those places, and type them in. Hopefully it takes the right one. Hopefully you don't get uh, you know scammed out of something, whatever else. But if you do use the affiliate links, it can be between 10 and $25 of Bitcoin if you use those and sign up. Just saying. And this goes over everything of all the ones that I recommend, don't recommend, all the ones that I use, personally use, and do not ever want to use. So Voyager and Celsius are my one-two punch. I buy everything from Voyager. And then Celsius, I put 15% of my entire portfolio there to gain yield. The rest of it is going into my ledger. So the thing with Voyager, why do I bring this up? So there's a couple reasons. First of all, Voyager will never go down. Because Voyager is a brokerage. It's not an exchange. What Voyager does is like Hotels.com. It takes all these different... Hotels.com looks at all these different hotels and gives you the best price. They're like, oh, do you want to stay at Motel 6, Motel 0, Super 8, or uh, you know, Double Tree or whatever else? They'll give you all the prices, all the locations. They'll go, this is the best price. Go to this one. That's all they do. Voyager does the same thing. They're like, hey, <laughs> sorry, uh, Coinbase and Kraken and Binance are down. But if you want to sell, we've got these other ones over here. And they do that all behind the scenes. Now... They don't charge a commission. They get paid in the spread. Not too much. I'm okay with that. And I am I would actually pay more because they're always up. They're always up. And you know what's even better about that? You can buy cryptocurrency digital assets and you can sell cryptocurrency digital assets for fiat. So it is an on-ramp and an off-ramp. That is why I'm so bullish on Voyager. And if you watched my video earlier today, I talked about, I, I gave you my entire portfolio for 2021, my price predictions, everything that I think is going to happen. And one of my biggest buys that I am super bullish on is the Voyager token. And I lay it out why it is and why I think it's going to go 50x to 100x. Now, look, I am not a moon man. I'm not a moon guy that says, hey, you know what's going to the moon? Tomato coin tomorrow, $10 million. I give you some pretty conservative, and everybody that is, while you watch the video, I said, you know what? It's very conservative uh, figures that you get. And they say that I'm on the low side. So one that I have, 
50 to 100x Voyager token or VGX. I'm gonna explain to you why in that video. So I'm gonna link this at the very end and you can check it out. And that's it. So thanks for sticking with me to the end. I appreciate it. Uh, if you like these types of videos, uh, there's gonna be two months gonna pop up on your left and right. I'll let YouTube do their magic, except for one, I'm gonna put this video on the one on the, probably the left. And uh, that is it. So again, I appreciate you. Have a great day. I'll see you on the next one.